In the meantime, the Nigeria army has explained why it withdrew troops at Dubchi town before the attack on the town that led to the abduction of the 110 girls at Government Girls Science Technical College, Dubchi. Military and diplomatic analyst Debo Bashon joins us now on the News Hour for some perspective on this. Thank you for joining us. Oh, it's a pleasure. Now, the military says that uh, it ensured that there was no imminent threat against uh, the school, against Dapchi as a community, because uh, the town has not been known to have been attacked by Boko Haram. But is that enough to have withdrawn the troops from uh, uh, the school? I think there's a problem with communication there, uh, information management. We have a problem with the army, and this is what they should correct. See, uh, when you are in a war zone, from the little we, we were taught in the army. Uh, there is no area that should not be secured when you are in the periphery of a war theater. So there shouldn't be an excuse that a, a place very close to the war theater is deemed to be safe. So that's the problem they've got there. So that and excuse is not tenable? It's not tenable. It's not tenable. And uh, I still wonder why some heads have not rolled by now. Mm. Because uh, in other climes, uh, most of the commanders in those areas who have come by now, they have been sent home. But then the military also said that it handed over to the police 40 days, not a week, as uh, claimed by the governor of the state. Does that really change anything? It does change a lot of things because, uh, but you can see that there has been a brick bad sort of uh, argument. Yeah. The police is saying no, the army is saying yes, and uh, who is to be believed? You see, this is, uh, this is an example of lack of coordination among the uh, protective forces around those areas. But now, people should know what to do exactly if there is a better coordination. That, that's an example of why the coordination is, is, is not what it's supposed to be. And now, so what does that say of uh, the interest or the function of the security operatives to secure lives of citizens. And that, that's what I'm saying. That, uh, the question is up in the air. Because if you cannot get your facts right, your arraignment right, uh, there's a little doubt that uh, you'll not be able to protect the citizen you are supposed to protect. All right, now there is a fresh report that Boko Haram attacked another military convoy yesterday and killed two soldiers. Now, why is the terror group still dangerous? Have we really won the war against uh, this group? You know, I mentioned something like information management when we started this discussion. It is the problem because we have not been available with the facts. The public has not been available with the facts of what is actually going on. Uh, the victory that we claim, uh, it's not that uh, there is uh, a tremendous effort to wipe the uh, terrorists out, but not to the extent that uh, we may need to understand. The fact is that they are still on the ground and they are still a threat to the security of Nigeria. Now, how do you see the efforts of our neighbors in this fight against uh, Boko Haram? Uh, but you know, uh, politics everywhere is local. It depends on the interests of those countries, you know. If they believe, uh, and uh, you know, with our size, with our resources and everything, I can bet you that most of the West African countries around us, uh, our neighbors, are quite jealous of us mm. for the position that nature has endowed on us. So now um, that uh, in looking forward, how much impact has this had and where do we begin to uh, coordinate or put back uh, structures in place? Because like you know, the government has uh, made several efforts to ensure that money is spent to equip the army and ensure that, or the military to ensure that the fight against the, these terrorists are won. But what then are we really to really focus on to ensure that uh, we are really winning the war uh, against uh, these terrorists? You see, there is a difference between uh, making money available and implementing what you are supposed to do with the money. Who knows what has happened with the money? Because those areas that are, uh, sub, uh, are left blank now, that allow these terrorists to come in, they are supposed there is a presidential panel, if I may understand. There was a presidential panel which uh, was set up by the president that all those areas that have been, you know, there are some security for the schools. I wonder why this Safe schools not, initiative. This, yes, why this, wasn't this one applied to this same, uh, same school? One would wonder that what is going on here? And uh, uh, one could smell a rat there, that things are not okay.
And so the question of did we learn from uh, the lessons of how the Chibok girls, uh, from the incident of the Chibok girls, is also comes to mind at this time because it is uh, said to be a similar style of attacks that happened in Chibok in 2014, a year before the elections in 2015, and we are also having this a year before the elections in 2019. Uh, some, uh, some people believe that there could be an undertone of politics and if we have learned the lessons from the Chibok experience. Well, if we have learned the lesson, these things shouldn't have taken place in the first place. So it is avoidable. It is avoidable. You see, but uh, it means the dots and uh, the I's have not been dotted, the T's have not been crossed, and that's why this is happening. Because if they were to have done what they should do, it shouldn't happen at all. This type of thing shouldn't repeat itself. I don't know, and that's why I mentioned earlier that I opted that. I don't know, because this thing has happened to us once. It shouldn't happen, and you're talking of lives of human beings here. About 110 uh, young ladies, I mean, just carried off like that. The other one, uh, the, the Chibo girls have not been recovered. I think they, 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 quite a large number of them are still out there in the bush. So what are we talking about? This is where we expect the president to, to show the leadership and take uh, the bull by the horn, get all these uh, people who are parading as commanders or wherever they are out of the theater and get fresh, fresh people there, fresh faces. Now, the, the Air Force is saying that they have deployed more uh, forces down to uh, UB State to ensure that they are able to uh, rescue the girls, but is that enough? That's the question. Why is it always best seen after that? These things should have been prevented, like I said earlier. They should have put all these things in places that these uh, terrorists should not be able to evade, to penetrate, to all those places they are now. So the problem lies with the command and command structure of the war theater itself. And uh, there should be an investigation. Mm. There, should, there must be an investigation. If and you if don't want the repetition of what has happened. And if there should be an investigation, how would you expect it to go? Oh, well, I mean, uh, those who are supposed to have, who shack their responsibility. Because now you can see that some people are supposed to perform some duties, and they did it. And uh, as a result, 110 souls are hanging up in the air now. So uh, the, 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 the government should come down with the, with, with the big stick and make sure that uh, the whole place is reorganized, because we cannot keep going like this. You know, about a billion dollars was uh, voted the other time. Mm. What we wonder, what, where's the money? What was go going to happen to the money now? You see, these are things that the money is supposed to take care of. But now that is, we can see that there is laxity everywhere, the question be, the president should show leadership here, please. He should be prevailed on to show leadership here. That this thing, the, 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 the committee of nations are laughing at us mm. because other armies of the world are wondering what is going on, mm. you know. But in the west, uh, sub, uh, sub region, West Africa here, we are like kings, you know. We can never do wrong because most of them look up to us. But we have to show leadership that this is the way to go. And uh, that, that's the only way we can do. And we uh, one last question. So what does this uh, incident, a second incident now have, on what impact does it have on our image? Oh. Our is, is a better image that Nigeria has got now, especially the military, because you don't, you don't allow such a thing to happen. That's a military, a military organization that established such a thing. It is not supposed to repeat itself. You know, they say the, the, the set examples, it has happened to you once, then you have to do your homework. As far as we are concerned, we are made to understand that the homework has been done perfectly. And you can see the, uh, the mantra is that uh, They've been decimated, uh, they are technically defeated, and that kind of thing. They are not even supposed to be able to do one-third of what they have done uh, a few days back. Mm -hmm. If that's if uh, the, everything were in the right places at the right time. All right, military and diplomatic analyst Debo Basharun, many thanks for your time on TVC News Hour. It's a pleasure, every time. TVC News continues after this break. Stay with us.